to the channel I'm your host and Lord of Legato Ken Levine I'm a singer and vocal coach here on YouTube and today we are looking at Mahesh Kale's Aruni Kirani live in Melbourne but before we do that I'd just like to remind you all to please remember to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't want to miss out on any of the great stuff that we produce here every week on the channel and plus it makes me feel good so and if you're new right I subscribe down below in the comments and I will do my very best to respond to as many people as I possibly can so now this is a suggestion from Ronak Day a subscriber, he says, if you're up for another South Asian recommendation, Mahesh Kale's Aruni Kirani in Melbourne is mind-blowing. So I always enjoy a little bit of mind-blowing action, <laughs> uh, musically speaking. So let's just take a look and see what they are, what he's talking about. Three, two, one, go. Just starts right into it. Okay, so already he's playing with tempo and playing with tuning in a way that to like Western ears is like, whoa, where are we going on this journey? It feels very, um, uh, it feels very mystical already up at the beginning. I'm not sure what this song is. Maybe there's some... Uh, I don't think there is any um, subtitles here. So we will just go, musically speaking, into... Okay, so there's no subtitles, but we'll just muddle through as best we can. Three, two, one, let's go. Okay, so there's no subtitles. I checked. Uh, we'll just model through as best we can. Sort of a very lazy nasality to it. Oh, that's so cool. anything quite like that before uh amazing He's rolling up his sleeves. It's like, okay, it's going to get real now. How is he making that vocalism? Uh, I think that's a combination of, you know, manipulating your vocal tract with uh, some tongue movement and some breath support movement, um, coordinating that to give it that. Um, uh, I don't. I don't know what what, what kind of quality. I, it's it's not it's not traditional vibrato at all. It's a it's a different kind of vibrato that is much more exaggerated and fascinating oh oh 
And you're like, okay, we're in the center of the tone. And see what I do now? I'm going to just twist the pitch around just a little bit. We'll do some microtuning. And and uh, and instantly your ears adjust to that. And you're like, that seems normal. That seems absolutely. But it's so cool how he's bending these notes. <laughs> Okay, so the incredible breath support, I, I couldn't tell, but it seemed like that excessively long phrase was all in one breath and carried off with such incredible ease that I, I just I find it so remarkable and I have to stop, even though this is so cool and I, I just want to get into it some more, but I have to comment. I can't let that pass and just say that is when you are in complete mastery over your instrument and understanding where it is that you're going with that phrase and how you're going to shape it and knowing exactly how much air or breath support that you need. I guess you could call it more like breath management. It's sort of like this is how much I need to dole out and this is how much energy I need to make that happen. There was a couple, there was one moment, there was one moment that I was like, he had to take a little snatch breath. And I think it was it was more because he was like, uh, Mahesh was was riffing a little bit. And and you only you don't even notice it. Like if you it's just sort of it goes by like a second, a millisecond, and then he's on to the next thing. Um, so much of that, this is really cool. <laughs> As he's 
moving down through his entire range, going down to the bottom and coming back up. And he's 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 uh, continuing. Um, one of the things that I, I was marveling at is the control at which he was moving the the vocal energy from. Uh, from the, the back of his uh, his palate in towards that forward placement <laughs> like moving back and forth through his vocal tract and uh, in his adjustment as he's going down through his uh, range and then up back not to the top of his range obviously but uh, back up through the top uh, back up through sort of his mid range, his mixed voice area. Very, very interesting, cool. It's such a wonderful sense of play that is just being exhibited by uh, Mahesh and uh, all of these other players who are just like, look at how glued they are onto him. He's conducting the whole thing as he moves through, and it's just, ah, it's just so, it's so vibrant and playful and fun. <laughs> Okay, towards the end, uh, I don't know if that was intentional. It felt like as he was holding that high note at the end, perhaps he might have been gone a little bit off the pitch that he intended to end on. But I mean, you know, give him a break. It's been seven minutes of like vocal pyrotechnics moving in through uh, all of these different techniques that I'm, you know, just uh, totally green to. I, I really don't um, have much to offer in terms of insight as to what he's doing from the classical Indian vocal technique that, that obviously he's employing. Um, I, I'm looking at it from my vantage point and just saying there's a lot of really cool stuff that he's employing here. And again, you know, that sense of play, which was so evident through uh, between him and his other uh, performers on stage was um, really quite remarkable and infectious. You know, like I said, you know, it was very vibrant and infectious and, and they were just there to um, play and have fun as well as take the audience on a particular journey. And uh, yeah, I went along for the ride. And I have to admit, if uh, Runic Dave hadn't uh, suggested this, I probably would not have clicked on this. Um, I have to admit my own sort of biases. You know, you, we, we hear with our eyes sometimes and sometimes we just sort of give things a pass that we otherwise um, would enjoy uh, just because we um, you, we're, we're um, uninitiated, I suppose, into it. But now that I am, I will be looking out more for Mahesh Kale and uh, listening to what he does in future productions. Anyways, uh, yes, thank you, Ronick Dave. And thank you, everyone, who's uh, taken time to offer suggestions for uh, other music for me to look at and enjoy. And um, I just want to put this out there to uh, singers of all stripes and anyone who's wanting to expand their tonal palette, vocally speaking, uh, I strongly recommend that you reach out to a vocal coach. Maybe you're an up-and-coming uh, singing sensation. Maybe you are a professional who just needs to brush up a little bit on what it is that uh, maybe they're struggling with something. I know that I went through a period where I struggled with um, vocal problems that I couldn't quite make through on my own and I was very fortunate to have a fantastic guru of a teacher that helped me uh, see through those trouble spots and work through them and come up with a plan that would um, propel me into the next phase of my career. 
So maybe you're one of those. I strongly recommend you reach out to a vocal coach. There might be one living in your area. That's the best way to learn one-on-one. -on -one. But if not, times being what they are, you can reach out to one of us in YouTube. You don't have to work with me. There's lots of vocal coaches out here. But if you want to work with me, I will be sure to leave those links down below in the description. You can get a hold of me at my Wizio page or on KenLevineVocalCoach.com. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. And please, as always, uh, remember to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on the stuff that we produce here every week on the channel. And if you have made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for joining me and going on this ride. And we will see you next time. <laughs> Dani 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 d